In this video, I'm going to show you the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. So the next action I want to show you is explode takes into lanes. So I have a project set up here, and I want to record a vocal. And I just want to use takes, not lanes. So if we go to the options menu, on the new recording that overlaps existing media items, we're not choosing lanes. We're just choosing takes, which is the default. So if I record this vocal, it's just going to record takes. Hey, you couldn't see it coming. You might have thought it, but you couldn't change it. Now if I record another pass, it's just going to record a take on top of it, like this. Hey, you couldn't see it coming. You might have thought it. Change it. Let's record one more. Hey, you could see it coming. You might have thought it, but you couldn't change it. So now we have three takes, which you could hear back by hitting the T key for take one. Hey. Take two. Hey. Or take three. Hey. Or we could just click them. What if we wanted to use the comping system? That's been added to Reaper 7 with fixed lanes. We could do that by exploding these takes. Just select this item, making sure we select this track, go to the actions menu, show action list, and type into the filter explode. There's an action right down here that's gonna explode takes on selected tracks to fixed lanes. Or this one is gonna add a comp area from the active takes. We could use either one, but let's use this one. Double click it, and it transformed those three takes to fixed lanes with a fourth lane for comping. So now we can comp using the new comping system and fixed item lanes in Reaper 7. Hit the T key to switch to lane 2 or lane 3, or back to lane 1, or just click on it, or create new areas like this for each one of these phrases. So now we can hear each phrase. and comp using fixed item lanes. And we're done, and we're happy with all the pieces. We could right click up here, disable lanes, and now we just have the keeper pieces. If you wanna comp again, just right click, enable lanes, and we're back to comping again. So you can record into lanes, or record into takes, and just explode them into lanes later, using the comping system added in Reaper 7. The next action I want to show you is how we can drag and drop our side chains. I have a project in front of me here with a loop, which sounds like this. And I added a kick track to it. And now I want it to pump and breathe based on the kick part. So in a side chain, compress it to be lower when the kick plays. Now the typical way to do this is to add a compressor to a loop track. I'm gonna choose rear comp, although you can use any compressor you want. Then we'll create a send from our kick track to our loop track by dragging and dropping it. And it's sending audio from channels one and two to channels one and two. We don't want that. We wanna send the audio from one and two on our kick to three and four. So we could use it as a side chain. But you can see, there is no three and four. We need to create one, or add channels to the loop track, which we could do right here for three and four. So now it's sending our kick to three and four on the loop track, which we could use as a side chain. So now we go to the detector input and set it to aux input. And now we'll see right here, the kick is going into our compressor. So we can bring down our threshold, so it'll pump and breathe with the tempo of the kick. Notice how it ducks 
or compresses when the kick hits. So that's sidechain compression, but we could do this a lot quicker. So let's start over by deleting the effect and removing our send and putting the channels back to two channels. So the quicker way to do this is to add the compressor onto the track like before, but just drag and drop the kick track to it. Go to the routing and drag and drop it right on to the plugin. And that creates a send from one and two to three and four. So it added those two extra channels for us. So it's already ready to be side chained. We just have to change the detector input to aux input. So it knows what input to react to. So now just do the same thing. That's a lot quicker than the first way. Let's do it again. Clear this, put it back two channels. Just add any compressor you like. Drag and drop it from here into here. We created that send, set it up over here. And now we have a side chain. So that's dragging and dropping to create side chains. The next action I want to show you is using effects chains for parameter modulation. So let's say I want to add a filter to this track, go to the effects on it. Let's say I need Q right over here, get rid of all the bands except for one and change it to a low pass, which is going to sound like this. Let's say we want to modulate it. We can select the frequency as the last touch parameter, go to the menu, and choose parameter modulation, which opens up this dialog. We could turn on parameter modulation with an LFO and adjust it from here. Make it a bit slower, adjust the strength, change the baseline, and let's hear that. Let's say we like that, but we need a way to save it to use it again on different tracks or projects. And we can do that using an effects chain. Just select this effect and right click it, go to effects chains, and save selected effects as chain. And then we'll give it a name and save it. And now, if we ever want to use this again, just double click, go to effects chains, and it's right here. Double click it to use it. Not only is it open up with our EQ, it saves the parameter modulation exactly as we saved it. <music> to use in any project using any source we want. The next action is to shift double click to create a time selection. So these loops are all separate items. If I just want to hear one and have it loop, I could double click while holding the shift key. And that selects that item and creates a time selection based on the size of the item. So if it's exactly one bar like this, it's going to play like this. Assuming you have looping turned on down here, and also in the options, you have loop points linked to time selection turned on, which it is by default. So with those turned on, I could just shift, double click any item, and it's ready to loop just that item based on its size. Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into multiple parts. Check out part four next. 
So those are the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!